and I couldn't buck him off. Later on, things clicked into slow motion. The morphine, maybe. I focused on Jorgensen's brand new boot, then on the pebble, then on my own face floating high above me, the last things I'd ever see. I couldn't look away. It occurred to me that I was witness to something rare. Even now in the dark, there were indications of a spirit world. Azar said, Hey, you awake? I nodded. Down at Bunker 6, things were silent. The place looked abandoned. Azar grinned and went to work on the ropes. It began like a breeze of a, a soft sighing sound. I hugged myself. I watched Azar bend forward and fire off the first illumination flare. Please, I almost said, but the word snagged. I looked up and tracked the flare over Jorgensen's bunker. It exploded most, almost without noise. A soft red flash. There was a whimper in the dark. At first I thought it was Jorgensen. Please, I said. I bit down and folded my hands and squeezed. I had the shivers. Twice more rapidly, Azar fired up red flares. At one point, he turned toward me and lifted his eyebrows. Timmy, Timmy, he said. Such a specimen. I agreed. I wanted to do something, stop him somehow. But I crouched back and watched Azar pick up a tear gas grenade and pull the pin and stand up and throw. The gas puffed up in a thin cloud that partly obscured Bunker 6. Even from 30 meters away, I could smell it and taste it. Jesus, please, I said, but Azar lobbed over another one, waited for the hiss, then scrambled over to the rope we hadn't used yet. It was my idea. It rigged it up. I rigged it up myself, a sandbag painted white, a pulley system. It was my idea. Azar gave the rope a quick tug, and out in front of the bunker six, the white sandbag lifted itself up and hovered there in the misty swirl of gas. Jorgensen began firing, just one round at first, a single red tracer and thumped into the sandbug and burned oh azar murmured quickly talking to himself azar hurled the last gas grenade shot up another flare then snatched the rope again and made the white sandbag dance oh he was chanting starlight star bright bobby jorgensen did not go nuts quietly almost with dignity he stood up and took him aim and fired once more at the sandbag i could see his profile against the red flares his face seemed relaxed, no more twitching or screams. He stared out in the dark for several seconds as if deciding something, then he shook his head and smiled. He stood up straight, he seemed to brace himself for a moment. Then very slowly he began marching out toward the wire. His posture was erect, he did not crouch or squirm or crawl. He walked upright, he moved with a kind of grace. When we reached the sandbag, Jorgensen stopped and turned up and shouted out my name. Then he placed his rifle muzzle up against the white sandbag. Oh, Brian, he yelled and fired. Azar dropped the rope. Well, he muttered, show's over. He looked down at me with a mixture of content and pity. After a second, he shook his head. Man, I'll tell you something. You're a sorry, sorry case. I was trembling. I kept hugging myself, rocking, but I couldn't make it go away. Disgusting, Azar said. Sorriest fucking case I have ever seen. He looked out at Jorgensen, then at me. His eyes had the opaque, polished surface of stone. He moved forward as if to help me up. Then he stopped and smiled, almost as an afterthought he kicked me in the head. Sad, he remembered. Then he turned and headed off to bed. No big deal, I told Jorgensen. Leave it alone. But he led me down to the bunker and used a towel to wipe the gash at my forehead. It wasn't bad, really. It felt some, I felt some dizziness, but I tried not to let it show. It was almost damn now, now, dawn now, a hazy silver dawn. For a while, we didn't speak. So, he finally said, right. We shook hands. Neither of us put emotion into it, and we didn't look at each other's eyes. Jorgensen pointed out, at, pointed out, out at the sh shot up sandbag. That was a nice touch, he said, and almost had me. He paused and squinted out at the eastern patties where the sky was beginning to color up. Anyway, a nice dramatic touch. You've got a real flair for it. Someday maybe you should go into the movies or something. I nodded and said, that's an idea. Another Hitchcock, the birds, you ever see it? Scary stuff, I said. We sat for a while longer, then I started up to get up, except I was still feeling the wobbles in my head. Jorgensen reached out and steadied me. We're even now, he said. Pretty much. Again, I felt that human closeness. Almost war buddies. We nearly shook hands again, but then decided against it. Jorgensen picked up his helmet, brushed it off, and looked back one more time at the white sandbag. His face was filthy. Up at the medic suit, he cleaned and bandaged my forehead, and then we went to chow. We didn't have much to say. I told him I was sorry. He told me the same thing. Afterward, in an awkward moment, I said, let's kill Azar. Jorgensen smiled. Scare him to death, right? Right, I said. What a movie. I shrugged. Sure, or just kill him.